This tutorial is to help you learn how to use cell functions in the app numbers. For this first sheet, I have a running log. And so I have the number of miles that the runner ran in the second column, and then I have the time that they ran in the third column. One thing I want to point out to you, so this was 54 minutes and 12 seconds. If I delete that, I want to show you how to get an insert time. So if I just click on a cell, and it's typically going to give me either the keyboard, so the ABC keyboard, the one, two, three number pad. But if I go over to the button at the, at the right, there's a little hourglass and a calendar. If you click on that button, you could start inserting times. And so I want to put in durations. So I'm going to hit the button at the bottom left. And so I can put in that time that I had. So I think it was 54 and then I'm going to hit the minutes key. And then I don't need a space. I could just put 12 and then the seconds key. And when I hit next, it's going to automatically format that as a time. And so that's how you can input times into numbers. And so uh, I'm going to show you how to do some functions. The first one is we're going to calculate the average pace per mile for this runner. And so to do this, we're going to put it in a formula into that selected cell. And so um, we want to take the total time that they ran, so 33 minutes and 21 seconds. And so anytime I'm going to input, in, uh, input a cell function uh, into numbers or Microsoft Excel or any spreadsheet program, I have to start off by hitting the equal sign. And so numbers provides a button for you to do that at the top right. So I hit that button and it brings up my function menu. And I want to divide the time by the number of miles. And so I could just click on the cell, 33 minutes and 21 seconds, and it, you could see that it starts building me a formula. And I want to divide that by, so I hit divide by the number of miles. So now I'm going to click on the miles. And so it's taking the time on Sunday and dividing it by the distance and mileage on Sunday. When I'm done with the formula, I hit the green check mark, and it automatically calculates the pace per mile for me. And so I could put a title in this column. And I'm going to call it, so I have to go to my keyboard, pace per mile. Actually, I'm going to uh, put that as the units. So minutes, and then I'm going to also put seconds per mile as my units. Okay, and that, that's kind of assumed, but we could put it there anyway. What you'll notice is this also gives me uh, this milliseconds part because this it calculated it out, and that's what it happened to be. To get rid of the milliseconds, I can change the precision in the cell. To do that, I click on the cell, and then I go to my format paintbrush at the top, the very top, and I usually it's going to be in the table menu. I want to scoot over to the cell tab, and when I do that, I want to but I want to go to format, sorry, the format tab, the third one over. And you can see right now it's on automatic. I want to make it so it's uh, duration, because we're talking about minutes and seconds. And when I go to the more information menu, when I click on duration, so hit the I, you could see that it's giving me units of minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So I could take the slider and scoot it over to just minutes and seconds. And then when I close that out, you could see that that's going to be formatted to not show the milliseconds anymore. Okay, so I click on the cell, format paintbrush, third cell over, I go to format, and then I clicked on duration, and then I went to the information menu. Okay, so now I want to do that same calculation for all of these days. So I don't need to type that in over and over and over. What I could do is I click on the cell, get the additional menu, go to cell actions, and I can click this button that says autofill cells. It highlights my cell in gold and it gives me pull handlebars on three sides. I want to pull this down. So this is going to automatically fill the formula and it's going to recalculate each of those paces for me. So I only have to put the formula in once and then I autofill the rest of them. So I have my pace per mile for this runner. I could, um, I could also find the total miles ran. So let's go ahead and put the total. To do that, I could put a formula, so put the equal sign, and I'm going to do a sum total. So type in the word sum, and you can see it, it, 
once I start typing a formula, it gives me all these options for the possible formulas that Numbers has logged into the program. So I'm going to hit Sum. Then my next thing is to indicate that I'm going to provide a range of cells that I want the sum for. And so I put in my formula sum, I'm going to put left parentheses. Once I put the left parentheses, I'm going to click on the first cell, and I'm going to take that bottom right blue handlebar, and I'm going to drag it so that it covers all of the cell range that I want to take the total for. I do a right parenthesis, hit the green check mark, and it provides the total amount of mileage for this runner. So they ran 31 miles. Um, I could also have the average pace for this runner, so or I could just have an average anything. So I'm just going to put an average column for this one. And so we could figure out the average mileage that they ran each day. So I'm going to type equals, type in average, left parenthesis, go to the first cell, select them all, right parenthesis, green check, and it gives me the average uh, mileage. Now we could see we have a crazy amount of decimals here, so I want to format that down. So format, third tab over, uh, and then I want to go to select number in this case, and I want to go to I, and the number of decimals I'm going to uh, decrease. So I can, I first hit uh, the plus sign to reestablish it to zero, and then I'm just going to do, I'll do to the tenths. Um, and so I click out of that, and you could see that the runner averaged 4.4 miles per day. We could also find the average pace for this runner. So equals, type in average, left parenthesis, and I'm going to select this entire range, right parenthesis, green check mark, and that's the average pace for this runner. So those are, um, that's how you do auto-filling cells, formatting the cells, uh, changing the level of precision within the cell, taking a, a sum total, taking an average. Let's move on to the next sheet. This is the business finance sheet for, let's say, a restaurant. And so we could see we have gross sales per week and we have the expenses per week. And so what we could do for this business is we could calculate the net profit for each week. So to do that, we'll type in our equal sign. We want to select the gross sales and we want to subtract out the expenses because that's a takeaway from how much money is being made. I'm going to hit the green check mark. I want to fill all of these cells over. So click on that cell, click it again. I guess I have to close my keyboard. Click it again, cell actions, auto fill cells, fill them over to the right and I could see um, my net for each week. I could then get my total net for each week or my total net for the month. And so I'm going to type in equal and I want a sum total, left parenthesis, and I want to select all of the, the nets, right parenthesis, green check mark, and there is my total. I could also get my totals for the group, the gross sales and the expenses. Close my keyboard, tap on the cell, cell actions, autofill cells, drag it up. There we go. You could see that um, this business only keeps track of their expenses and sales to the whole dollar amount. So all of these 0 .00 for the, the cents is kind of irrelevant. So we could format those out. So select all of those cells, format paintbrush, go to the format tab, and I want currency. Hit the information menu, and I want to change my decimals from two to zero. And that gets rid of all those decimals. And let's move on to the next sheet. Uh, this sheet I would like for you to do on your own. And so this column, if you could calculate the grade, so we have the score for each exam, we have the points possible for each exam, and so you need to fill in the highlight areas. So we have the grade, you need to format those as percentages, and then you need to determine the average grade. So that's it. Try this one on your own, and you are finished.